gotta be kidding, right? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 ridiculous and outrageous celebrity claims. And I'll tell you what, three weeks ago I thought he was born in this country, right now I have some real doubt. For this list, we'll be looking at claims made by famous people that seem ridiculous, absurd, and or unbelievable. I woke up and yeah, a ghost. I was being mounted by a ghost. Since we're only focusing on celebrities, we'll be excluding seemingly far-fetched statements by world leaders like Kim Jong-il, although there are many. Uh, he finished the Rubik's Cube in 30 seconds when he was two years old. Oh, c come on! Number 10, Tom DeLonge. Claim, he is studying aliens with NASA. Here's a song when aliens fly into your butt. With trillions of planets in the universe, there's bound to be alien life somewhere, and most of us can get behind that theory. That being said, for Blink-182 guitarist and co-lead vocalist Tom DeLonge, this is not just a theory, it's reality. I'm not an idiot, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with something that's much bigger than me, much complex, more complex, and frankly, it's probably the most important thing I've ever done in my life. He's given up Blink-182 or they gave up on him depending on who you talk to. Either way, as of 2016, he was devoting much of his time and energy to tracking UFO sightings and collecting data. Tom's my, my good friend. He is pursuing his, um, his, uh, <laughs> his uh, journey in uh, finding UFOs and aliens. DeLong claims to be working directly with NASA and the Department of Defense on special projects. A piece of info he couldn't share with his bandmates, you know, because it's top secret stuff. To be fair, he's not the only rocker to believe in aliens. Former Joe bro Nick Jonas is also convinced the truth is out there. But Tom's claim is just a little more out there. Maybe I was in my backyard playing basketball with some friends, and I looked up in the sky, and there was three flying saucers. Really? So this is Hollywood, and everyone was like, it's a movie, it's a movie set. And I was convinced it was real, and I, and I looked up online, uh, and there was three identical sightings in other states. Wow. And uh, so I'm a firm believer in aliens. Number nine, Liam Gallagher. Claim, he is the reincarnation of John Lennon. Yeah. Don't listen to her, she's just as f***ing mother as me. You know Oasis, of course you do. Cause according to the band themselves, they are bigger than the Beatles. The secret to their success could be that their lead singer, Liam Gallagher, is the reincarnation of John Lennon. Well, yeah, my son Lennon. Called him after John Lennon, man, without a doubt. And I know he probably gets stick for it, but it is a tribute, you know what I mean? But yeah, why not? Like I said, man, I love Lennon. How is that possible, you ask, since Liam was born in 1972, which would have made him eight years old when John Lennon was killed? Apparently, those little details don't bother Liam. I don't care about his life. All I care about is his music. And I don't need to drill him on his music because it's there and I listen to it and that's all I get from it. In fact, Liam's brother Noel Gallagher claims that for a while, Liam was trying to mimic John Lennon's accent and even asked to be called John. However, Noel had many other things that he preferred to call his brother, but we can't repeat any of them here. Liam kind of does the and all that again, and he kind of storms out of the dressing room. Number eight, Paula Abdul. Claim, she has never been drunk and has never taken drugs. The moth who finds the melon. <laughs> no, finds the cornflake. Finds the cornflake, always, always finds, finds the, the melon. melon. And what? what? Towards the end of Paula Abdul's run on American Idol, she began to act spacey, slur her speech, and flirt with the male contestants. This led many to believe that the former pop star was drunk while on set. Listen, any publicity is good publicity. You gotta learn to eat it up. And, and embrace it and say, Seattle had the best delusional people. Abdul vehemently denied the rumors, stating she's never been drunk ever and that she doesn't do drugs either, despite her long career in showbiz. I've never been drunk in my life, ever, never, ever. All right, we'll give it to her that her odd behavior on the show didn't mean she was an alcoholic, but her insistence that she's never been drunk in her entire life is a whole other story. I need help. Do you guys understand that? Even though her defense doesn't really add up, Abdul has yet to offer up any explanation about her apparent absent-mindedness, quirky sense of humor, and goofy demeanor in general. Tell us, what are you looking forward <laughs> to this season? How about a lot of you coming in? <laughs> it's, a, it's a wild party where you are. Come on, Paula. You gotta be straight up with us. Run. 
Number 7. R. Kelly. Claim. He feels like he's the USA's Bin Laden. It's the remix to Ignition, hot and fresh out the kitchen. Mama ruling that body, got every man in here wishing. It's true that both R. Kelly and Osama Bin Laden allegedly appeared in notorious videos that horrified the public. However, it's a bit of a stretch for Kelly to compare the level of persecution Bin Laden received as an international terrorist to the recording artist's own troubles with the law. This is a guy who doesn't exactly have the best history. You know, he married Aaliyah when she was 15 back in 1994. The R&B crooner, who was charged with child pornography, claims that people treated him like, quote, the Bin Laden of America, since they didn't know the facts about his story. Kelly is accused of videotaping himself having sex with an underage girl sometime between January 1998 and November 2000. He told Blender magazine, quote, Osama Bin Laden is the only one who knows exactly what I'm going through. Just to recap, R. Kelly was cleared of the child pornography charges and continued to record music. We're just having a backyard party. While Bin Laden was killed by Navy SEALs. Got a possible jackpot. Roger that, possible jackpot. Shit. Number 6. Pat Robertson. Claim he can leg press 2,000 pounds. And they just said, oh, you can't do it. Your eyeballs will pop out, your veins will rupture, and you will just be a, you know, a, a basket case. There is no denying that Pat Robertson has a strong bond with God. After all, he is a famous television evangelist and host of The 700 Club. But can he leg press 2,000 pounds? That would be a miracle. But it was one time. I don't want to, one time. One time? Yeah. Witnesses claim they saw the 73-year-old perform the Herculean feat, and the Christian Broadcasting Network has even posted photos of him doing it. But experts on the subject of weightlifting are doubtful. For perspective on the magnitude of this claim, the college football record for leg press is 1,335 pounds. That would mean that the 73-year-old, and not particularly buff 73-year-old Pat Robertson, has legs stronger than the strongest college football player. The answer is yes, they will, they can. Not the sort of miracle that benefits humanity, but one that would likely require divine intervention to make possible in this case. Yeah, I used to warm up my leg presses. I warmed up at 500 pounds, and then I went up from there and I did. Yeah, that, that was <coughs> a little over the top, a little Mr. Type A. <laughs> Number five, Donald Trump. Claim, Barack Obama's published birth certificate is fake. And, and you know what? His grandmother in Kenya said he was born in Kenya and she was there and witnessed the birth. We can make a whole top 10 list of crazy things Donald Trump has said and done. In fact, we have, twice. Still, perhaps nothing was quite as extreme as when he claimed on Twitter that he had an extremely credible source tell him that Barack Obama's birth certificate was a fraud. But I saw his, I read it very carefully doesn't have a serial number, doesn't have a signature. There's not even a signature. Do you and believe he is I'm lying? starting to think that he was not born here. He had already made half the country cringe when he made the presidential candidate show his birth certificate the first time around. As some of you heard, uh, the state of Hawaii released my official long-form birth certificate. Hopefully, that this puts all doubts to rest. However, to then say that the birth certificate Obama produced was fake was wildly outrageous. A huge conspiracy. Huge, in fact. Who is this incredibly reliable source? Maybe it's the same source that backed him up when he said he saw thousands of Muslim Americans celebrating on 9-11 in New Jersey. And I watched in Jersey City, New Jersey, where thousands and thousands of people were cheering as that building was coming down. Number four, Jenny McCarthy, claim vaccines cause autism. In 2007, Playboy model turned actress Jenny McCarthy announced her son had autism. She then claimed the disorder had been triggered by too many vaccinations and that chelation therapy helped him recover from it. He's completely absolutely. recovered, Larry, completely recovered. And he's not the only one. There are thousands in this community that are getting better. After that, she and her now ex-boyfriend, Jim Carrey, became huge advocates for the anti-vaccine movement. While it's great that McCarthy has seen so many improvements in her son's life, According to the overwhelming majority of doctors, there is no evidence at all to support McCarthy's claims. 
So you ask any mother in the autism community if we'll take the flu, the measles, over autism any frickin' day of the week. Not only is McCarthy's stance as an anti-vaxxer relying on pseudoscience, it's also described by experts in the field as dangerous. As vaccines have eliminated deadly diseases like polio, smallpox, and measles. You've looked at two of 36 shots and one of 35 vaccines, and you're going to stand on the stage and say that vaccines and autism are unrelated. It is the most bogus tobacco science. It's a smokescreen. Anybody who takes the time to read it would agree. Though McCarthy has tried to convince the public that she is not anti-vaccine, here's hoping that great damage has not already been done to public health. Hey, remember that time you got polio? No, you don't, because your parents got you vaccinated. Number three, Wilt Chamberlain. Claim he slept with 20,000 women. We all know that Wilt Chamberlain knew how to score on the court, but man, did he also know how to score off of it, at least reportedly. In Chamberlain's biography, he claimed to have been intimate with about 20,000 women. See, there's a clock in Times right. Square. Take yeah. a look at this thing. Let me it's see pretty it. incredible. Yeah. I didn't yeah. think that. Uh... <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Right. While Chamberlain's friends have confirmed that he was very good at picking up the ladies, 20,000 seems to be a crazy high number. Uh, I doubt if his numbers are correct because too many nights I saw him going back to the hotel with nothing but a bag of McDonald's. <laughs> if you do the math, then that would mean from the age of 15 onward, Chamberlain would have slept with on average 10 different women every week. There is a lot of myth and legend associated with Wilt Chamberlain, as you might imagine, and, and sex. Mm -hmm, uh, how mm -hmm. much of that is true? One hundred, are you, are you 100 percent of it. How anyone could pull this off remains a mystery, but it definitely puts his record of scoring 100 points in a single NBA game to shame. <laughs> Number two, Kanye West. Claim he is more influential than Kubrick, Picasso, Paul the Apostle, and Escobar. I made Jesus walk, so I'm never going to hell. Couture level flow is never going to sale. Kanye West is no stranger to narcissistic comments. After all, he once described himself as Shakespeare. I'm standing up and I'm telling you I am Warhol. I am the number one most impactful artist of our generation. I am Shakespeare in the flesh. However, his most absurd comment has to be when he was backstage during Saturday Night Live and ranted that he was more influential than Stanley Kubrick, Pablo Picasso, the Apostle Paul, and Pablo Escobar by 50%. Bro, by 50%, Stanley Kubrick, Apostle Paul, how could he possibly have more of an influence than one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, one of the greatest artists of all time, one of the first people to teach Christianity, and one of the most successful drug dealers of all time? It's a mystery, especially considering he's only been famous for about two decades and doesn't even have a greatest hits package out. But in Kanye's world, it's undoubtedly fact. With an attitude, I feel like O'Shea. That part. Walking, living legend, man, I feel like Kobe. That part. Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. I'm a, I'm a high priest, uh, Vatican assassin, warlock. I'm hip bar, you know what I'm saying? Come on, man. The real me is a southern girl with a Levi's on and an open heart. Wish I could save the world. Number one, Bobby Brown. Claim he had sex with a ghost in a haunted mansion. What? You, you had sex with a ghost? A ghost, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. If you've read Bobby Brown's memoir, Every Little Step, you'd see that the R&B singer has definitely had an interesting life, full of sex, violence, and drug abuse. Yeah, the trouble's gonna find you. You don't have to go looking for it. You know what I'm saying? Perhaps the strangest part in Brown's book is when he claims to have had sex with a ghost. He explains that he had just moved into a spooky mansion in Georgia when he woke up in the middle of the night and found a female ghost mounting him. I was being mounted by a ghost. I wasn't high. 
That was my next question. It's important to note that he was adamant that he was not on drugs while the sex act was occurring. Maybe he's telling the truth, maybe he's lying, maybe he's crazy, but maybe, just maybe, Brown just had one of his Ghostbusters 2 songs stuck in his head one night as he was falling asleep. Too hot to handle, too cold to hold. They call the Ghostbusters and the end control. Do you agree with our list? What do you think is the most ridiculous and outrageous celebrity claim? You are not allowed to be a president if you're not born in this country. He may not have been born in this country. For more absurd top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Yeah, I did uh, 30 reps at 1,000 pounds, but anyhow, I did all kinds of exercises.